Y'all, welcome back to my channel. It is Taylor Bridges here, back with another review of Put a Ring on It, uh, season four, episode two. And this episode is titled, What's the Stuff? Okay, we last left off with Chance downplaying Dunbar's aggressive, controlling nature. Uh, the, the Dunbar is clearly insecure about something. And again, Chance is totally fine with his shenanigans, but yet she won't marry him. And he's the one who spent y'all's first day in the hospital with you. And he puts your shoes on. He does all these things that you love him for doing for you. And yet you won't marry him. Um, I think it was Bondi. Bondi Blue who said that they must be here to just be on TV. And that's what I'm starting to believe. And we're only two minutes into the second episode of the season. And, and their cover's already about blown. Um, it's Joya wearing tattoo edges. Um, Dr. Stacy is going to have to speak to the couples on their level or literally everything she says will go in one ear and out the other. You cannot go back and forth with people like Chance and Dunbar. You have to pretty much do psychology on their behinds and make them admit to their horrible ways somehow. It's not that hard, but the back and forth with those kind of personalities, it's a dead end. And it's Dr. Stacy's job to deliver the message to their understanding. The way they can understand it and digest it. Dunbar sees absolutely nothing wrong with his actions. And Chance has quintupled down at this point that she loves the way he acts. He's her daddy. He's her world. All of this and all of that. And I think this is going to be a mess uh, when time reveals what's really going on with these two. I do like Joya's dress while they're all, all the couples are sitting there and her green boots. I'm glad that her and Jaysha moved past the whole napkin crumb beard thing and that they're on the same page. Uh, but I am ready to see how Jaysha behaves on his date. Catherine still has her roses from her date from last episode. I think his name was Mark. Catherine left the flowers on Ricky's side of the bed to remind him what he's not doing for her. And you shouldn't have to be doing all of that, Catherine. Put the flowers in the kitchen or something and communicate what you need in the relationship with your man and decide for yourself what you want to deal with instead of being passive aggressive with some flowers another man gave you because it's not working. That's all. If it were working, that'd be one thing, but that's not penetrating any of Ricky's emotions. Is Dr. Stacy's wig crooked? Um, Catherine doesn't know what she even wants from Ricky. Um, I don't think. I don't think she specifically knows. Joya does not want to go on another date with Kyle because he didn't really try to get to know her aside from trying to woo her. Chance is not going to give Phil another chance uh, because he, she, she wants someone more mature. Dunbar asks Dr. Stacy to provide someone with better competition. Okay, Dunbar, be careful what you ask for. Be careful what you wish for. Catherine says she will not go on another day with Ricky. And I thought her reason was quite thoughtful and reasonable because initially I was a little upset because I thought Mark was a great catch. And I thought that they definitely should have gone on a second date. But she says that on paper, Mark has too many similarities to Ricky with him being a dad and him being in a recent divorce. It's no sense in leaving the relationship with Ricky if that's already not working and then go hop into a relationship with the same kind of person and, and, and expect a successful relationship you know what I mean she can do bad without Ricky's behind if that's the case you know you better to just stick with the devil you know um, but two things can be true because I do agree with Dr. Stacy Catherine should focus on the person individually in front of her like take them for who they are everyone has a story everyone has a different story so just because on paper she's very similar to Ricky that doesn't mean that they're executing their lives similarly. So I do think that's fair advice. Um, but I do respect Catherine for at least recognizing a pattern and being willing to choose differently. Um, recognizing a pattern in the type of men she's in a relationship with. Um, the guys are the ones going on dates this episode and the ladies aren't feeling an, the idea. Uh, so I was thinking maybe the episode will be kind of entertaining. Um, now the ladies are all on Dunbar's side since now they want to be, you know, they want to control their man during the process. Nope. This is what you signed up for. And I don't, I genuinely don't see how this show is fun for someone who really is in love with their partner. I feel like this is for people who are like in situationships and just maybe want to get on TV and just, 
But I don't see how you get on the show if you're genuinely in love. I don't see what the purpose of it is. Pardon me. Jaisha is um, about to go on his date and Joya tells him he has no boundaries set for him. And then his date, Celine, walks in. She's beautiful. I think she has a little too, I think she had a little too much makeup on, but she looks great in her dress. Um, I wasn't a fan of her hair. I thought it looked cheap and it was a little lifted, but fine. Overall, and for the most part, she looked really good. But does Celine look older than 30? I don't know if she's 30. I don't know if she's given 30. I think it's a little older than 30. Celine and Jaisha vibe over zodiac signs and meditation in Spanish. And they, Celine makes this big thing about knowing how to speak Spanish because she travels all these Spanish speaking countries. They both were speaking about an elementary level of Spanish. That, that's about it. Elementary. I'd expect them to be able to maybe count to 10. I don't know why, why Celine was even trying to play. Um, did Jaisha invite Celine back to the house? To the, to the house he, the, the place he shares with Joya after their date? Is that what he did? Is that what I heard? They, they, um, um, Celine and Jaisha, they, they do also vibe off being easy going and going with the flow when it comes to relationships. But I don't know if Jaisha can handle a woman as chill as him. Most men can't. Ricky's date is about to come and we find that he and Catherine live in a house with family members. Ricky loves it because he's big on family. Catherine doesn't seem too thrilled about it. But living in the house are Ricky and Catherine, Ricky's mom and dad, Ricky's sister and two kids, and the brother is frequently there. So that's a seven and a possum. I want to know more about why Catherine and Ricky are really living in that situation before I give my full opinion because uh, it's something big. It's it got to be more than you being big on family. You're a grown man, closer to 40. Um, Ricky's date, pardon me. My heater is down here and it's making me all toasty and warm. That's why I keep yawning. Um, Ricky's date is Sheila. She's a nurse with these fiery red locks. She's a cutie. Um, I was thinking, is Ricky her type? Uh, Ricky's braids would totally throw me off. He's so handsome, but... So, so, so why would you have that on your head? Like, where does Ricky work where he's comfortable wearing his hair like that? Uh, Catherine initially says she didn't think Sheila was Ricky's type. And that's how little you know him. It's super obvious that Ricky was going to find her attractive. Usually those super laid back dudes like Ricky, the super go with the flow dudes like women on a very broad range. They're usually not as picky. Um, Ricky is claiming he wants to learn from his dates to be better for Catherine. And I sure hope that's the case, Ricky. We'll see. Sheila can't talk about anything else other than being a tomboy at the table so far. She's not even letting Ricky talk. Sheila doesn't have kids and says she doesn't mind a man with kids. She's more so concerned with the man's relationship with the child or the children's mother. Ricky explains that Catherine accuses him of breaking boundaries. He's apparently been spending the night at his ex-wife's house due to watching the kids all night while the ex-wife is out working in entertainment. And there is a world where that could work out and be totally innocent, but once the wife gets back home, you need to be heading back home. I think that's a fair com prop compromise. But honestly, I do also see a slippery slope forming from even that much. But I don't know. I don't have kids and my man doesn't have kids. So, so, so what do y'all think? I think it's messy. I think it can get a little, a little, a little messy. But I want to know if y'all think Ricky is innocent and sleeping on the couch at the ex-wife's house. I don't know. I mean, but but let me be clear. There is a world in which like a, a, a man can totally move maturely and innocently and respectful of his new relationship in that scenario. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just like, is Ricky doing that? Um, and at the date with Ricky, Sheila is laying it on a little thick. Like she's already pressing for another date. And Ricky just told her, like, be thankful for this free meal here. Like let's just stay in the present like no need to go hard for a man in a whole relationship like no matter what like you're setting yourself to, up to look foolish she look like this man is in a whole relationship dunbar is behind us about to go on his date and he's in the mirror chanting some nonsense because i'm not sure if it was considered a prayer chance is getting a little tense and anxious crystal is his date and she's stunning in the face but i think that big ponytail was just way too much 
and I think she needed a better bra. The wiring was just, a, it was a lot going on. But that big ponytail was just so cheap. It was just too much, just unnecessarily. Dunbar says that he likes that she was covered up, but Chance doesn't even dress that way. That's not Chance's style, so I'm thinking you're full, of, you're full of crap. I don't think Crystal is Dunbar's type, but that's just my initial assumption. Just based on how rigid Dunbar is, he's probably really particular. And since Crystal, or Chan Crystal and Chance are nothing alike, I doubt he's into Crystal. But we'll see if I'm wrong. I think he's just going to be a gentleman and be conversational, but I don't think he's going to flirt. Um, they end up going to a restaurant. Crystal's feeling Dunbar's look, and they're having a great conversation. But we can do without Dunbar mocking her. I didn't like that. It's not funny. But otherwise, the conversation was naturally flowing. Um, is Dunbar claiming to be a minister? And what are the odds of Crystal being a minister too? I definitely believe Crystal being a minister over Dunbar. I can't tell if Dunbar really likes Crystal. I think he's just putting on and I think Crystal should run. Um, I just think he was just being nice and playing it up in his confessional like as if Crystal really has a chance. Like, I don't think Dunbar is worried about any woman at all on this show, quite frankly. Um... Chance was asleep by the time he even made it back from his date. Um, so, but if, if Dunbar is the minister, is Chance supposed to be his first lady? And is Chance really in her early 30s? Because I don't think so. Dr. Stacey has pulled up to the house for a visit. I do love the color of Dr. Stacey's wig. I've been thinking that since last episode, even though it's crooked. Dr. Stacey is just as confused as us. Why are y'all there? Why are y'all here, Chance and Dunbar? What's the issue if y'all are going to be up each other's behind the whole time? Dunbar claims that Chance consults and depends on her dad before him. And Chance calls it out as BS before I even had to think it. Dunbar's crazy. Like y'all are on this show for clout. Cut it out. How are you not respected, Dunbar? Give a clear account of when Chance has disrespected you. Instead of just saying stuff like I'm not respected. She goes to her dad. All this. You're just saying stuff in front of a camera and that's immature. Dr. Stacey clocks that Dunbar is fearful of, I guess, losing Chance. Then Dunbar breaks down and the episode ends. Dr. Stacey and Chance will be going back and forth, and I've already clocked it earlier in this review that Dr. Stacey's temperament is going to clash with the cast if she continues like this. And it's going to be, it's going to get offensive and it's going to get loud. So she's going to have to give, I don't know, she's going to, do, she's going to have to do some gentle parenting. Yes, these are adults. But they are lacking maturity and the, you know, the cognition. So you're going to have to bring it down. You got to talk to them like they slow, like Dr. Nicole did. But I thank you so much for tuning in to my review. Please like, comment, subscribe. Come back in for the following reviews that I have going up today as well. I thank you so much for your time. Good night.